I've gotten over two anxiety disorders and what you're eating or consuming could actually harm your mental health, straight up. For example, before you reach for that warm and inviting cup of coffee to get your day started, you might want to reconsider it, especially on an empty stomach. That's because caffeine can actually stimulate the production of stomach acid. And when there's no food in the stomach to help buffer that acid, it can lead to stomach discomfort and feelings of unease, which might be experienced by some as anxiety. But that's not the worst part. High levels of caffeine, even found in some sodas, can stimulate the central nervous system to the point of inducing anxiety-related symptoms. Caffeine by itself can lead to increased heart rate, restlessness and jitteriness, especially in sensitive individuals or people who are prone to anxiety-related issues. And I personally rarely ever drink coffee. However, this summer I did have an iced coffee, which I have done a few times in the past, but this time it didn't go down too well. I essentially had chest and arm pains matched with jittery intense feelings for a good four hours. At one point, I thought I was literally having a heart attack. But yeah, since then, I haven't touched coffee again, even though before, it was a rare thing anyway. So if you are prone to anxiety or you have an actual diagnosed disorder, coffee and caffeine might be something you want to avoid or simply just dial back a bit. The next beverage is simply awesome and it's the polar opposite of coffee. It contains compounds that bind to the receptors in the brain and nervous system, leading to a sense of calm and peace. Perfect for the chilled and anxiety-free kind of vibe. Drinking chamomile tea before bedtime can also help improve sleep, which is essential for managing anxiety. On top of that good stuff, chamomile tea also has anti-inflammatory properties that might help reduce inflammation, which is often linked to increased stress and, of course, anxiety. So it's an all around good thing to consume when you think about it. Maybe try lessening your coffee consumption and perhaps consider introducing a spot of chamomile tea once in a while, especially a couple of hours before you go to bed at night. That's a power move for a good night's sleep. But the next food group feels like it was created for the sole purpose for inducing anxiety itself. Processed foods are typically nutrient poor lack essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants necessary for regulating mood and reducing stress. And on top of that, it does get worse. They have high levels of added sugars that can lead to rapid blood sugar spikes and crashes, resulting in mood swings, irritability, and heightened anxiety. Unhealthy fats commonly found in processed foods, such as trans fats, contribute to inflammation and oxidative stress both of which have been linked to, you've guessed it, anxiety and other mental health issues. Additionally, artificial additives in processed foods can be problematic for some individuals, potentially increasing anxiety even more. So yeah, if you are hell-bent on getting an anxiety attack or problems with anxiety, just eat a bunch of fast food because it probably will get you there quicker. So the next food group is something you really want to add into your diet, and it's actually really simple to do. This group of foods are super rich in antioxidants and vitamin C, which help to protect the brain from oxidative stress, something fast foods do the opposite of. Vitamin C helps to support the adrenal glands, which can become overactive during times of stress. And this food group that contains these wonderful compounds is of course berries. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, grab whatever you can and go wild by adding some berries into your diet. Now here's a pro tip or a kind of a warning. Lots of berries have pesticide residue on them and water alone doesn't really remove them. To get around this, add them into a bowl of water with bicarbonate soda and this will actually remove harmful pesticide residue. Now you can thank me later guys and gals, cheers. Now here's the deal with the next thing, it's kind of important. But like they say, too much of a good thing can be, well, bad. We're talking about sodium, and it's hiding out in a lot of the stuff that we seem to consume. Things like fast food, processed munchies, and those super salty snacks. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, loading up on salt can actually send your blood pressure soaring. And that, my friend, that can crank up those stress and anxiety levels to new highs. So maybe ease up on the salt shaker from time to time, and your chill vibes will thank you later. Up next, something I find really tasty and something I consume about two, three times per week. It's got a secret ingredient that's like a mood booster. 
and that is fatty fish. Think salmon, mackerel, sardines, and also trout. These guys are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, which are the superheroes of brain health. They fight brain inflammation, boost those happy chemicals in your noggin, and they keep your brain in tip-top shape. So do try to sneak some fatty fish into your diet on a regular basis. As a general rule for health, you want more omega-3s than omega-6. If you have the balance leaned more towards omega-3s, this can lead to all kinds of positive results internally. It has been said by a lot of people that a glass of wine a day is meant to be good for the old ticker, you know, the heart. While this might be true in some people, how many people really stop at just one glass of wine if they're having a drink? Alcohol is pretty bad for anxiety related issues, that is after the initial buzz has worn off. You see, alcohol is a bit of a downer, literally, because it's actually a depressant. So it might make you feel relaxed for a little bit, but once it's out of your system, it can actually crank up your anxiety. Plus, it loves messing with your quality of sleep, which just adds to the next day anxiety hangover. So maybe consider your sips wisely if you're prone to anxiety. Now I know for myself that I did use alcohol as a kind of self-medication in the past, especially when it came to hypochondria. And yet, it never worked out well in the end, let's just say that. The next thing is super important for your mental health, but also in the long run, your physical health too. Fiber is like the unsung hero of your digestive system. It keeps things moving smoothly and it can help stabilize your blood sugar levels. When these levels are steady and stabilized, you're less likely to ride the roller coaster of anxiety and stress. It helps to create a healthy gut microbiome, which, as explained in previous videos, is also known as the second brain. If your gut bacteria is out of whack, your mood and anxiety would also be pretty negative. Of course, the question is, where do you find that good fiber? Where is it sourced? Well, you've got your whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, and whole wheat bread. Fruits like apples, pears, and berries are in on the action too. And don't forget about veggies, especially broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and sweet potatoes. So yeah, just make friends with fiber-rich foods, and you might just find that they have got your back when it comes to keeping anxiety at bay. But if you want to see what I do every single day, even on rainy days like this, to keep my anxiety levels low, just click that video on screen. But until next time, guys, peace.